Hi, I'm Bob Watson, and I'm going to talk to you about how to write what counts and count what counts when it comes to your API documentation. A little bit about me, I was a software developer for about 15 years, writing APIs for much of that. Uh, I was a technical writer after that for about 15 years, and I still am. Uh, but along the way, I did some graduate study and got a PhD in human centered design and engineering from the University of Washington in Seattle and studied the usability of APIs and API documentation. And this talk draws on my professional experience as a, on both sides of the API, as well as my academic research and the study of using documentation to uh, solve API problems. Today I'm going to talk about how to measure the success with your documentation. I hear that a lot, like how good is our documentation, how, is, how well is it doing? Well, we'll talk about how to measure that. At the same time, we'll talk about what you can't measure, because it's important to know what's possible and what's, what's not. Uh, then we'll wrap it up into something useful that uh, hopefully you can take with you to your uh, to documentation. So what I'm not going to talk about, just to set your expectations, is uh, any specific analysis tool. This is more of a process dis discussion. Uh, I'm not going to be able to tell you how to make this happen quickly. If I could, I would, but I haven't seen that to be successful. And I'm not going to talk about how to bend the metrics to your will, uh, or what do they call analytics theater. Um, this is just about a process that will help you uh, understand your success and be able to measure that to show it to other people. So drilling into the, the metrics, uh, I'm going to talk more about external performance metrics. Now I've divided metrics up into these four quadrants and the vertical axis the, between performance and forensic describes how you're going to use the metrics. Um, I've differentiated that by performance metrics are those metrics that you've asked a question of before you collect the data, then you collect the data to answer that, to see how your uh, documentation in this case is performing. Forensic metrics are data that is data that you collect for the purpose of being able to ask a question of it later. So like what happened on Tuesday, you know, what we, we had ex uh, some unexplained experience, we'll look at the metrics to see what happened. It's sort of the flight data recorder of your documentation. Now you can collect da data that can do forensic analysis and performance analysis, um, and so you can have the same type of data, the same metric, appear on both of, in both of those sides, uh, but it really just depends on how you've uh, asked the question of that data, whether you've done it before you collect it or after you collect it. Also on the horizontal axis, I've got internal and external metrics. Internal metrics are those that are collected on your process. Everything up to and including putting it you know, online, publishing it. Uh, external metrics are things that happen outside of your control. Things that readers do, like page views, uh, interactions, things like that. Things that happen outside of it. So each one of those has a different purpose. Um, and one of the problems that makes these discussions complicated is when they start getting mixed up. So I want to simplify this and clarify this by saying I'm going to be focusing mostly on external performance metrics. Now this process should work with any particular quadrant uh, in that the process we're about to describe is on you know, how to dis describe and define the metrics you're going to be using. But I'm going to focus on external performance metrics. And so I'm also going to focus on success. So let's talk about what is success. Merriam-Webster, the dictionary, uh, describes success as uh, uh, to attain a desired object or end. And so that, that seems easy enough to interpret for our sake of documentation. We start by describing the success that we want to see. What's the goal that we want to accomplish? What's the end that we want to achieve? Uh, and so, you know, what's, where's the finish line? Now, finish line in documentation could be a moving target. Uh, it could be the finish line for this month. So don't get hung up on this as being a particularly fixed point in space. It's relative to you know wherever you're wherever you are. Uh, you'll want to take your documentation uh, metrics and interpret them in a larger context. 
typically, you know, while some metrics are useful, inform, informative to you and useful for you as the the writer or the the writing manager, uh, oftentimes documentation is there to support a larger cause like c company success, uh, company goals, stakeholder goals, reader goals, and so you want to make sure that you understand and have a clear relationship between your goals uh, of the documentation and how those contribute to the larger organization and, and your customers. Now, understanding all this isn't a linear process. Uh, you'll have to go through and, and, and you have to think of it as uh, uh, an ongoing process because as you go, you learn more and then that makes the next pro iteration more informed and then you get better uh, definitions, better measurements, uh, better analysis and around and around it goes and so it's important to start off with that mindset that this is an ongoing um, iterative process that you're going to be changing and improving over time. Now this talk as we start drilling into the actual content which we're getting too close it's it's coming up uh, I'm going to talk about the description process because in my experience both in the professional and academic world describing success is the seemingly the most obvious and presumably easiest, but in actual in actuality, uh, it's the most complicated process because your description has to support a lot of uh, requirements, and we'll talk about those. So, you want to be able to describe your goal, your success, in a way that's measurable, countable, and collectible, because if you can't describe it, you can't count it. If you can't count it, you don't know what to collect. If you can't collect it, then you have no data to evaluate your goals. And so you want to describe what's most important to you, what's most important to your customer, what's most important to your organization. And you want to hear from them what their goals are. Because for you to be able to communicate your goals and your successes, uh, it's easiest when you can do that in a context that uh, whoever you're talking to understands. So if you're talking to marketing, you want to understand marketing goals so you can describe how your documentation goals uh, give them success. If you're talking to engineering or other business uh, groups, you want to understand what their goals are for their content and the product so that you can relate your goals to theirs. That just makes the conversation easier. And it also helps you collect information that's meaningful to the uh, the, the the most stakeholders. So oftentimes the uh, you're not there yet and that's probably why you're here. Um, your goals might not be clear, they might not be shared, uh, they might not be understood by everyone, uh, the metrics to collect the information on those might be uh, hard to define, uh, even if you've defined them they might not be collectible because you don't have the technology and so that's why this is an iterative process. We have to go around and make sure that the goals are describable and that they make sense to everybody, that they're, they result in metrics that you can count, and that they result in that uh, those metrics can be collected using the technology that you have available. Now, technology doesn't always necess doesn't necessarily mean you know, some, some fancy web tool, because if you're collecting survey data, maybe you, could do, you need to do that in person. So technology is in the in the broad sense, not strictly in the uh, in the web sense. But as the diagram shows, this is going to keep going. You, as you get new technology, new metrics, you might identify new goals. Maybe you want to drill into something because you see how you might be able to improve something, or you might uh, the business model might change, or the audience, you know, the market environment might change to where something becomes more important than it used to be. So keep this keep the, keep this going. Make sure that you develop the process to come up with this as a way that will bring you back to it to where you can uh, review and improve. So in a lot of these talks there's like what's the secret? You know, If I just have the right Google Analytics everything will be fine. And from what I found you know there isn't any particular secret but um, the process of this discussion and this collaboration and the sharing of goals and understanding of goals turns out to be, I think, 
the, the, the nugget, the, the diamond in the rough of, about for this process. Because as you discuss and compare and, and understand, you get you understand other parts of the organization and what their goals are. They now understand how documentation contributes to this because you're going through this ongoing communication of understanding goals and sharing your goals and your metrics and understanding how those feed into the process. Uh, the success of the company, the success of the company comes back to you. And so you get a lot more people uh, understanding how documentation is working for them, not just working for you or working for the customers. It's got to work for everybody. And so uh, the collaboration that you build through this iterative process is actually, I think, uh, if it's not the secret part of the process, it's a se certainly a secret part of the goal. But give it time because it's going to take time to do it right. There's there again. There's no fast way to do it. I haven't seen one. I haven't heard of one. Uh, but again, as soon as I do, I'll be sure to share that. Uh, it, it reminds me of cooking. You know, where if you want to cook, for me, I'm a pancake person, so I make pancakes, and uh, it, you have to get the right temperature and the right time. You can't speed it up by turning up the temperature because that just makes charcoal pancakes. And if you turn on the temperature and give it more time, then you just get gooey pancakes. So it, you have to go in with the expectation this is going to take as long as it takes, but you'll get better each time. So don't let your enthusiasm impede your progress. Um, and so develop the process that will give you the way to iterate through these things, identifying your goals, identifying your metrics and uh, the technology that it takes to measure them so that you can produce the information that's going to help. Now since we're all about API documentation, let's talk about some API documentation examples. API documents have many goals and they have goals that uh, that have to um, work for a lot of different use cases on the user. So start Start small, work your way up, identify the goals, you know, maybe the, start with the most important goal, and if you can't solve that, then go to the next important goal because that might give you tips on how to solve the most important goal. But work through it. And remember that API documentation has several types of content. Uh, one of the, I think the most common sort of grouping of API documentation that I've seen over and over uh, is that you have introductory content, uh, you have tutorial and procedural content, uh, conceptual content, and then reference content. Now each one of those types of documentation is different. It serves a different purpose. It serves a different use case. Uh, and so for the purpose of coming up with goals, you, those are going to have different goals. So be, you know, understand that. So let's talk about document goals. So each topic in your documentation set should have a specific goal. I mean, you, that's why you're writing it, to, to accomplish some task or to help the reader accomplish a task or to give them information. So you should be able to you know, articulate that goal. You know, this document is successful when it does something. I think you can drill into that a little bit. Uh, I like this version better because um, this document is successful when it does something for a particular audience because you're generally writing for you know one audience. And now you might have documents that have to serve multiple audience, but it's good to articulate the goals by audience because uh, you might be able to count the same thing even though that's a different audience. Um, for example, uh, this document is successful when a developer learns more about our product. There we go. Developer is the audience, learns more about our product. So now we can figure out how to measure that. How do, how do we measure learns more about our product? Well, we'll talk about that. Uh, this document is successful when a developer finishes the tutorial. Okay, maybe that's your measure of success, and then we just figure out how to measure that action of finishing a tutorial. And so as you go through each document, you come up with ways to identify the audience, and then identify the goal, and then you can drill in into the goal to figure out how that might be measured. Now, if you have a large content set, you might end up with a lot of goals, a lot of uh, content, a lot of metrics and measurements that uh, might be, give you a lot of information, but it might not be practical to manage. So you want to balance the 
precision, the need for your to have precise data against the need to have you know the practical ability to collect and manage that data. So find the sweet spot. And I think as a place to start is group your topics by their type. You know, you have introductory, conceptual, tutorial, um, procedural, and reference. And use those as a way to group the topics because those tend to share goals uh, sufficiently to where you can get precise enough information about your content uh, while still having a manageable amount of analysis to perform. So let's start with that. Let's do some examples. Uh, introductory topics attract. It's, that's my assertion. Um, your introductory topics hopefully do something similar. Uh, so what are introductory topics again? They're landing pages, overview pages, uh, getting started pages, and registration pages, we'll say. So our organization's goals are to attract and interest readers. Our readers' goals are to solve a problem. They want to find something that will solve the problem. Um, what do you measure? Well, what could we measure to attract how we are attracting and interesting readers? We could measure um, incoming uh, page views. We could measure referrals. We could measure social media traffic. Are we getting their attention and getting them to our site? Uh, it's essentially your basic funnel. You know, are we getting in touch with them and are they coming here? Once they come to our site, are we funneling them to our call to action? Do we want them to download? Do we want them to sign up and register? Uh, what's the call to action? How do we know that this topic has succeeded? Um, and at this point, it's to get them to learn more, to get them into the product. And you know what that what that actually is depends on your product and how you're um, presenting that to the customer. Um, but it's a like I said, it's a it's a pretty much a standard um, funnel. Catch a lot of people and funnel the people who are interested into becoming customers. So because of that, the good news is, is Google Analytics is really good at doing that because they've that's their market. So you know you can use Google Analytics and a lot of their tools to see if you're collecting where they're coming from, what their demographics are, and get them into your site. So those are some examples. We've got goals of attracting and interesting. We have ways to measure that. We're going to define uh, they're interested in our product by if the number of people who register or download. Uh, and then we can count that. And from there we can define our success as we're successful if it's a certain percentage, a certain number, whatever your goals are. So now we have customers who've registered and downloaded and whatever. Now we want to teach them. So we want to demonstrate how that software works. Now that we've got them interested and they know that it does what they want, uh, we need we have tutorial and procedural topics to demonstrate how that actually works. And so our goal is to make our customers successful. Um, the reader's goal is to be successful because they want that the pro they want that problem solved. And so how do we what do we measure? So what do you how do you measure success? Well, that's this is where it's starting to get tricky, and this is going to where you're going to have to look at your customer and your product to see how this works for them. Um, do they need to, you know, if a common case in an API is are they going through the tutorial and using it in a product? Can you look at their, you know, can you get information on how they're using your service? You might need to work with the engineering team or the, you know, whoever manages your API keys and interactions to see if those customers are actually using the APIs that they're showing tutorials. Um, if you want to see if they learned a tutorial and then applied it to a product, can you connect those dots? Um, if you can't, then at least you can see did they were they successful in the tutorial? How might you do that? As they go through the tutorial, for example, you might uh, give them quiz questions like, okay, so as you applied these two functions, what was the result? Did you get the result that you expected? And if you can't test that automatically in your code on the server, then you can ask them a question in the document and get some feedback. So this is, we're, we're, because we're deviating from the funnel now, this isn't necessarily a funnel instance, uh, you're going to have to start engineering your designs or your documents uh, so that the, um, they're giving you the information you need. And it's easier to do that when you have a question, like how do I know that they've succeeded? Well, let's find a way to, to ask them, you know, you know, 
did you get the right answer? Are you successful? How do you feel about this? Are some ways to find get some feedback on their success. Um, so that's not as easy as the funnel interaction from the, the introductory topics, but it is easier than the next one, our conceptual topics, which are there to teach. Now, if, uh, if you thought a procedure was challenging to figure out, to finding out if someone actually learned something about uh, a concept is challenging, especially when they might want to learn something, but not everything. Um, so the way to measure if a conceptual topic taught them, you know, you might not be able to collect that because the means to do that accurately might not be you know, possible or the audience might not want to take an exam. They want to do other things like put this to work. Um, so some ways I've seen to improve, to, you know, kind of get some feedback on that is to, um, you know, ask for, you know, did this teach you what you wanted to know? Uh, maybe get some survey. The one good thing about conceptual topics is they take some investment. And so you, you because they've invested in the topic, you have their attention. You might be able to use that to get some, some detailed feedback. Um, you might be able to make it a game and say, oh, so, you know, add up pop-up uh, pop questions, maybe get points, you know, gamify it a little bit. Uh, it depends on your audience. And so that's where you're the expert uh, and I'm not. So, you know, what works with your audience? How can you get the information you want? And again, this is, remember, this is an iterative process. So if you don't get it right the first time, you'll get it better the next time. And finally, my favorite topic, the reference topics. Um, these are probably the most difficult to measure for a variety of reasons, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't ask questions um, because as you ask the questions, you can find ways to find the answers. If you don't have the questions, then there's no way you're gonna find the answer. But some of the things that make the reference topics complicated are the fact that the success of the topic occurs distant from the topic. You know, they're reading a, a question here to answer some small uh, detail about something larger that's going to happen someplace else. They're looking up at an API to make an API work someplace else. Um, their investment in the topic is minimal. In fact, zero as much, as close to zero as possible because they're working on a, a different task. They're doing something in their program or their and they don't have, you know, they're not there to read reference topics. Reference topics are, you know, an unfortunate means to an end. So they're really not invested mentally in that topic beyond their question. So getting, you know, well, so how is the writing in this page or some, you know, detailed question about your topic is not on their mind. Um, so, you know, the, the way to get information about your reference topics is really to put them in a, in a usability study setting to where they are focused on that. And then you can kind of, you know, find out, you know, what's working, what's not working, because they're that's what they're there for. So it's a little bit artificial in that they're not solving a problem, but it's the you know that you'll get information about the the content. Um, you can also get you can also ask feedback. Did this help? But uh, that don't count on that providing a lot of information. So after you've got all your metrics and you've got your goals and everything all set up. Uh, one of the things to consider is to normalize the metrics so that better is in the same direction, because that makes it easier to compare when you start getting to the dashboard level. Um, somewhere along the way, you want to decide, are you using baseball scores or golf scores? Uh, better, and you should use that philosophy for all of them. So for baseball scores, more is better. Uh, for golf scores, less is better. And so make sure that you count everything in the same direction so that the, the graphs are easy to digest because, you know, a dashboard that's hard to read isn't really much of a dashboard. And so with that, observe and iterate, what do they say on the shampoo, lather, rinse, repeat. Um, just build your process, work it through, go through goals, topics or goals, descriptions, measures, and metrics, and the technology necessary to collect that and reflect that back to your goals and just keep iterating. Um, the one thing that I'll warn you going into this is that there's going to be some assembly required. 
unfortunately, Google Analytics works for the funnel case, but it doesn't really give you a lot of the support for um, the other cases like query questions and detailed feedback and other types of non-funnel related uh, analysis. Um, so you're going to have to be in, you know, get your hands dirty with the tools. You might need to work some of that into your content so that it's compatible with your uh, analytics tools so that you can get the answers to your question. You might have to engineer some questions. You might have to work with engineering to help you. Um, the Be ready for some non-traditional approaches to problem solving. But as technical writers, that's nothing we haven't done before. So takeaways, uh, I'd like to wrap this up. Uh, the, we talked about how to describe the success that you want to track how to collaborate with other stakeholders on that, uh, those descriptions because the, you share them uh, and you want to be able to share them. You want to describe success in a way that's countable and collectible. And by knowing what success looks like will help you write towards that success. Uh, and as you um, be able to uh, create it and measure it and then continue your iteration um, for an improvement. So I hope you enjoyed this talk. Uh, I hope you can take something from this and go out and create, measure, iterate, and improve. Thank you.